guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and in this video we're going to cover all of the settings you can change on the Google Nexus One. I think that Android, more than any other operating system for a mobile device, really allows you to get in there and tweak and change a lot of system settings. The Nexus One is definitely no exception. So to start, turn on the device and we'll go right to settings and we'll go through all of the different um, settings that you can change on this device, starting with wireless and networking. So from here you can turn on airplane mode. Right now Wi-Fi is on and it's scanning for a wireless network or you can tap on Wi-Fi settings to sort of see the, the Wi-Fi networks that are around your area. Bluetooth is turned off right now, and you can change Bluetooth settings if you want to connect a hands-free kit or Bluetooth he headset or something like that. Then down, ha down here you can click on mobile networks and check off only use 2G networks, which saves battery of course, and I'm on AT&T right now, so I have no choice but to use the 2G network unfortunately. You can see a little G up there, I'm not even getting edge right now, which happens once in a while, usually I get a strong edge signal, which is obviously much slower uh, than 3G. So let's go back another screen. Let's go into call settings. From here you can change fixed dialing settings and you can also change your voicemail settings. We can turn on call forwarding and if we tap on additional settings we can we can change whether call waiting should be turned on. So kind of basic stuff that you normally don't really play with. So let's go into sound and display, some stuff in here that we want to talk about. So we can turn on silent mode so that uh, this phone stays silent if you're in a meeting or you're in a movie or something like that. We can change the ringer volume quite easily and you can hear how loud it gets and that is way too loud okay you can change the media volume to determine when music is playing or when you're uh, moving around the operating system how loud things are you can change the phone ringtone obviously there are tons of pretty interesting ringtones already included on the device and I really like digital phone I think that works the best okay we can go down a little bit we can go to phone vibrate, so the phone can vibrate for incoming calls, another way to notify you that somebody's calling. We can change the notification ringtone, and you get, a, of course, a big list of, of options. It's when a text message comes in or something like that. We can change the pulse notification light, uh, which will blink down here when you've got a new message or a text message. Very handy, so you don't have to go to your phone, turn it on, and waste a little bit of battery. You can just glance at your phone and see if you have a new thing you need to action on. We can turn on audible touch tones, so that means that when you're using the dialing pad, you hear the sounds. Audible selection, so play sound uh, when making a screen selection, which for some may be kind of annoying. Let's see how that works. So you can hear the sound. So I'm going to turn that off. We can turn on haptic feedback. When you do a lot of things on the Google Nexus One, you get a little bit of buzz, buzz feedback when you press these buttons down here or when you open the application tray. Uh, you can save a little bit of battery life by actually turning that off. SD card notification, so when you uh, do something with the SD card, it will play a sound. We have orientation. In most screens, you can just jump quickly into landscape, and this way, if you turn that off, that won't happen anymore in case it's kind of annoying for you. So go back down. Also, here's something you may want to change, animation. You can change if you want some animations or all animations. By default, the Google Nexus One does a lot of screen animation. So if we close out of here, it fades out. If we go into settings, it fades in. If we go to the, uh, the, the application tray, the icons kind of filter in in a nice aesthetically pleasing way. But of course, all of these things use a battery life. So if we turn off the notifications or the animations, I should say, um, you really won't get those anymore. So if I press home, it just goes away. If I tap settings, it just pops up, which actually makes the device feel faster, and it saves a bit on battery life, so you may want to um, keep that turned off. We can change screen brightness, and we can turn on automatic brightness. Let's see what it looks like with no screen brightness. You can still see the screen, and you're going to save a ton on battery life if you leave uh, the backlight off, but of course, outdoors it may get difficult to see the display. And we can change screen timeout so you can again save on battery life by having the screen automatically shut off by a set interval. I have it at 30 seconds right now. Let's go back to location and security. Also we can check off use wireless networks to uh, determine the location by Wi-Fi under mobile networks kind of using the triangulation. We can also set an unlock pattern if you want to uh, do that security and you have to do that to confirm. And then now, when you unlock your device, instead of just sliding to the right, you do a quick unlock pattern. But this has been an Android for a very, very long time. And of course, I'm going to turn it off by going to uncheck create. And now I don't need to enter a pattern. We can set up a SIM card lock. 
uh, we can have the passwords be visible as we type along, which is always handy because with an on-screen keyboard, you're never quite sure if you're touching the right letter. And there's some other stuff down here for cred credential storage that we're not going to go through. We can go into applications, and you can check off on that allow inst installation of non-market applications if you're getting applications from third parties on the internet and you want the device to accept these things. We go to manage applications to see all of the applications that we've installed from the marketplace. And right now it says computing, so it's looking up and seeing how much space these are taking up. And from here we can go to sort by size so that now Tweedroid, Tweedroid at the top is listed as having the largest footprint. And if we tap on any of these, uh, we are taken to some more information. And this is standard an Android stuff. We can uninstall and clear the cache to get back some memory. Or we can force it to shut down if it's misbehaving. Running services, we can see sort of a, a task manager of what's running right now. Of course, the Android operating system can multitask. So right now, I've got a few things uh, open and running. And then this is, I haven't really been here, development. So some tools for developers who are making applications for Android. Uh, accounts in sync will allow you to determine which accounts are sync syncing. There's very good Facebook integration with the Google Nexus One. Also, uh, Google account integration. So for email and for uh, calendar and things like that, you can turn that on. And this little symbol in the center is my Microsoft Exchange account, which is turned on and is syncing. And it's automatically syncing if you can, you can turn that on and off uh, to save on battery life and data transfer. If we go into privacy, uh, we can have it use your location so that when you are using a Google search, it knows where you're calling in from or where you're searching from so that it provides relevant results. Um, you can factory reset from here. It's a hard reset. Some stuff with SD cards shows you how big the SD card is, so 3.69. The Nexus One comes with a four gigabyte card off the bat, although it's not listed as you know that large, it's slightly less. And it says how much available space is. You can unmount the SD card for safe removal and internal phone storage. Right now I have about 160 megabytes of available space. Applications go to the, uh, the internal storage by default. Right now you can't store them to a micro SD card on the, on the Nexus One, although that's expected to change. Let's go to search and see what's there. Uh, we can go to Google search settings, and we can show web suggestions, leave search history on, we can even manage search, search history if you want to see sort of what you've been searching for. And also, this is pretty cool, searchable items. So you can choose what items in your phone are searchable. So that when you do the sort of global search, you can determine whether it's pulling vi uh, YouTube videos or contacts or apps or music. Right now, YouTube and music is unchecked. Makes it a little bit faster that way. And let's go back to the previous screen. Okay, so let's go into language and keyboard. We can select the locale here and determine which keyboard you want to use. It's on English, obviously, right now. On-screen keyboard settings for the Android keyboard. You can have it vibrate on key press, which is pretty cool, like the HTC HT2. Really allows you to really feel for the keys and know when you've hit a button. We can do sounds on key press, all that may be annoying to some people. Auto capitalization, voice input, which we showed in a previous video. Pretty well done. Um, and then also quick fixes, show suggestions, and autocomplete things to help you type a little bit faster and not make so many errors on the on-screen keyboard. And user dictionary, you can change words and add words to the user dictionary in case you're typing a strange word and the, and the device is constantly trying to correct you. Okay, continuing on, we can go to date and time here. We can have the, uh, the time automatically update, which is always good. You can switch to a 24-hour time format, or you can choose the, the date format depending on where you live. You may have a certain preference. And finally, some cool stuff down here in About Phone. Uh, we can go to System Updates to see if there's a new update for, for the system. There are none. Status shows you your phone number, the signal that you have. This is really, really neat, battery use. It shows you how your device is using battery life so that you can sort of attempt to cut down on things that are using the most uh, battery. So you can see that 36% 30 of my battery usage is from voice calls, and you can see sort of the progression down there. And you can tap on these items to get sort of some action. So I, ta I tap on display, and then it tells me what I need to do to cut down on display usage of battery. So I reduce screen brightness. Phone idle, there's not much you can do there. Android Live Wallpaper, which does use a little bit of battery life. It shows you there how much uh, CPU it's using. We can also go to Wi-Fi and see, um, go back to the Wi-Fi settings to turn off Wi-Fi, perhaps to save on battery life. You get it even a drill down by application. So email right now using just 2% of my battery life. And you can see everything else here, the firmware, the kernel, system tutorial, legal, 
all that good stuff. So that was just a quick look at all of the settings on the Google Nexus One. There's a lot of things you can change in any Android device, but uh, the Google Nexus One really extends that even more by giving you more things to sort of adjust about the system. So that's it for now on the settings on the Google Nexus One.